Welcome to the Raw Food Health Empowerment Podcast. I'm your host, Samantha Salmon, Certified Integrative Nutrition Coach and Brain Health Licensed Trainer. And you are here on one of the best nutrition podcasts on the planet, in my opinion, because this is where we delve into the powerful benefits of a holistic, high raw vegan lifestyle for achieving optimal health, brain function, and overall well-being. And today we're diving into the secret to thriving as a high raw vegan when you're living in this toxic food environment. There's junk food everywhere, oils everywhere. And if that's not conducive to your health goal, how do you even navigate the system when all of this stuff is out here and you have these cravings, the craving for the soul food and you're trying to reach your health goals? We're going to dive into there into that whole topic. The first thing I want to let you know, though, is I talk about all the neuroscience that's involved with cravings and how to break free from that addiction in my Conquer Your Cravings program. So if you're interested in that, definitely head on over to rawfoodmealplanner.com and book a call with me so we can discuss if this program is right for you. But if you are someone who has a health goal, has chronic disease that you're looking to reverse, has excess fat that you're looking to drop, then I highly encourage you to book a call with me to talk about this program in particular because you get a lot of support. You get weekly coaching with me, you get a trainer that you're meeting with every week, and you get meals um, prepped and prepped for you for the week by a chef. So it's cater just to you, right? Because if you're buying food out, even from the healthiest restaurant, most likely it's gonna have oil. I have yet to see a restaurant that doesn't use oil, okay? If you are looking for, if you're looking for some major deep healing and you have more money than time, then my coaching program is for you. Also, I have an option for you if you have more time than money for this coaching program for those of you who are struggling with cravings and that is keeping you back from consistency. So I just want to put that out there. Cravings, there's a lot to it with the cravings, but from a biological standpoint, you have to do the thing to get over the craving. There's a lot of stuff we work through in the Conquer program, so I won't even go into all that because we just don't have the time. But in doing the action of eating more raw foods, you are changing your gut microbiome, so eventually, these, the calls for the unhealthy food is going to dissipate, but you're gonna go through a struggle to get over it. So I will talk about chips for a moment, right? Processed food. I know a lot of you, that's your issue that you're trying to get off of. So like when it comes to chips, you have fat, you have salt dialed up at such a level that it's basically engaged the addiction pathways. We have such a pleasurable, excitable experience in our mouth, right? This is giving us the fun and enjoyment that we are not getting from our own lives, which is why we lean into the food to give us that, right? Some people are in a situation that is so dire, so stressful, lacking in options that this, to to their mind, it, this is like the only outlet that they have. And this may be valid. That may be the only option, which is why I love coaching because coaching allows you to broaden your scope a little bit because the expert on your situation is you, right? So a coach really guides you to find the solutions to get to the goals that you're looking to achieve. But only you can do the thing and you are the best person that's in position to find out the route best that's best to get to the goal you're trying to achieve, if that makes sense. So this is the environment that I set for uh, my clients. When I talk to them and I coach them through some of these issues, for some people, that's their only option. And that may be a valid point, but maybe when you get into community and you sit down with a coach, you're confronted with some things that you realize there's been some glass walls around you, right? This is the wall, the edge of your comfort zone, and you've been hitting that wall, and you didn't really see a path forward, but now you see, oh, you thought it was like an actual brick wall, right? You thought there was a full brick wall, now you're realizing this wall is glass, and I can actually go through it, but it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be painful, I'm gonna get cut. And so you're now moving out of your comfort zone, making this change. So 
anytime you're moving out of your comfort zone, you need to have a strong why, which I cover in my trainings and in the program. Like this is the foundation. Why are you doing it? <laughs> why is it important for you to be high raw vegan? Like why? So once you have that down, okay, you're down, you're why, but all of this temptation is around you. So how do you how do you deal with that? Like all of that temptation, all these chips. Like Trader Joe's is one of the ones that I'm just like, oh man, I wish I could redesign this store, but that's not their model. Because you walk in, at least in my Trader Joe's, and most of the Trader Joe's I see, you walk in and it's just wide open. You have the registers and then all the aisles and it's wide open so you can see the way it's spaced it's different like in in central florida we have Publix, right so the space between the registers and the aisles is is more narrower than trader joe's and so with trader joe's once you come in you can see even inside the aisle so that the aisle that has the processed food just like pops out it's just popping out so you can see it and you have to kind of go past it to get to the produce section if i were to design a grocery store it would just be it would be more probably more like berkeley bowl in the bay area where you go in and you just see produce all around you have to actually walk out of your way to get to anything bagged or packaged but just produce all around i love berkeley bowl oh my gosh one of my favorite places so you're in this situation you have this processed food that's just coming at you and you're trying to get off it you're trying to stay consistent one of the techniques that really worked for me in the beginning is like converting the foods that i really am looking to get the feeling of in a healthier manner so like when it comes to raw foods right so in the beginning of my journey i spent a lot of time a good amount of time i wasn't really given my whole paycheck to this place but cafe gratitude i frequented enough times to experience what expert it was chefs culinary artists were doing with raw foods and so i got to experience lasagna raw spaghetti raw burgers raw like sandwiches raw like you could do a, a tuna a raw tuna raw chicken salad like anything you could think of there's a raw vegan version like anything if you want aged cheese they have done that raw i have a colleague of mine that was on my summit the raw food health empowerment summit where she she wrote a book on how she dropped i think it was like 70 pounds making raw meals in like the comfort her comfort raw foods right so like the pizzas the lasagnas like all the stuff like i could dig back in my files to see all the stuff she did but all the things right that folks eat on the standard american diet she made a raw vegan version it takes a lot of work to do that but in the beginning it's probably really fun to play around and spend the time in the kitchen to do that in my journey though i've come to a place where one i have very little time Two, I, the fats, when fats go beyond a certain amount for me, I physically feel pain. So a lot of those comfort foods, they tend to have a lot of nuts and seeds. And yes, they're raw, but when you have a lot of that, sometimes you can, it just doesn't digest that well for some of us. And so for me, I like simplicity, but having had that experience, now I feel like I really just, I don't need it. I, if I, want something like today for example i basically water fasted for 18 i think it was like 18 hours 18 or 19 hours and it wasn't on purpose it was because i was busy had some work stuff and i was out away from the home and so coming back i ended up having an apple uh, some cashews and like in their raw cashews they're non-salted they're they're completely raw cashews with nothing on them and then i had another apple and then i had the rest of the cashews because i had just put a bowl because i was so hungry i was like let me just it wasn't a big bowl it's just like a little saucer because i know i can't do too much but i alternated between that and i had planned to do like a salad like a, a slaw because i have some cabbage which i may still do something since i still have some time to eat before i cut it off for the day but this is very simple because I just grabbed like the apples, I just washed. 
the cashews are just poured out the bag. Very simple. If I wanted to do something more complex, I need more time. But the I think the gift in simplicity with raw foods is that you pull away from the addiction of these hyper palatable foods and get your palate to a place where it actually can enjoy actual whole foods. So one of the things I noticed today is that like with these cashews in particular, right? They're raw, there's no salt, right? There's no, usually when you cook cashews, they cook them in some kind of oil. So it, it tends to have a, like a nice sweet flavor. And usually with the salt, it's, ooh, and it's like really dense. But these cashews, I've had them before and they tasted literally like nothing. I've used it to make cheeses, making different raw vegan dishes. And it tasted like nothing. But today, after having water fasted for 18 hours, I could taste everything in that cashew. Like I could taste some sweet, I could taste like the fat was kicking, like it was feeding me like on an emotional level, these, <laughs> these cashews, because I was pretty hungry. I hadn't planned to do 18 hour water fast. It just happened. But I wanted, I didn't want to break the fast with cashews because the heavy fat would just be too much. So I started with an apple to just prime my gut. I had already had water, I had even a cup of herbs drinking this morning. So my, it's not like my gut hadn't touched anything. I just hadn't touched solid food. So the first was the first apple and then I had some of the cashews and then I had another apple and then the rest of the cashews. But the simplicity of it, like to some people, ooh, that's not gonna do anything for me. I'm bored with my food. I hear this a lot, I'm bored with my food. And this is the thing, this is why as an integrative nutrition coach, we like to focus in on primary food. The primary food is what feeds you on all the levels, right? Emotionally, spiritually, psychologically. The, the, the actual food you eat is secondary. That stuff is just to nourish the body and the cells. So me, like I've literally felt weak. I felt so weak I wanted to sleep. Because at that point, when you start to get into 17 hours or more of water fasting, your body is going through autophagy, right? The cells are going through autophagy, which is basically cellular clean out, which is literally what your brain does while you're sleeping. And if you have a lot of stuff to detox, which I'm not sure a lot of stuff or not a lot of stuff. We're all under a lot of toxic load just living in America. But like at that level, I could tell my tiredness, one, I was doing a lot of, giving a lot of energy this morning to what I had to do for work. So that could have drawn the energy, right? Cause I had to do a lot of extroverted activities. And as an introvert, that kind of pulled some energy, but also having not eaten, my body doing this cleanup when with water fasting in particular, it is recommended to rest, right? To rest and allow yourself that time because your body's doing deep cleansing work. So it can feel, you can feel tired and fatigued during that. And so I felt, I felt really tired and, but the food was really just to get my energy back and not feel so hungry and so weak, so I can continue my day. I wanna save my sleep for nighttime. So the food is serving a purpose on a cellular level, not on an emotional level, right? The emotional stuff needs to be filled. Emotion, excitement is an emotion. Boredom, emotion, right? These things like, they're like, they're feelings, which pass quickly, but then there's like underlying emotions along with those things. And so that's really what we need to, we focus in on the primary foods to handle that, so the food doesn't have to handle that. We can use our prefrontal cortex, which is the CEO of our brain, to make wise decisions regarding our, our the actual food that we're consuming, instead of having it come from an emotional place, because physical food can never fill or quell an emotion. If you're stressed, there's a million reasons why you could be stressed. You could be stressed from the fact that you're not sleeping, but why are you not sleeping? You could be not sleeping because you have financial issues or there's some family stuff going on. You have heavy concerns about someone in your family. Maybe they have a health issue going on, right? These are the deep-seated issues that need to really be addressed. That stuff, you can't fix that with food. I just wanna put that there when it comes to comfort food. However, if you're in the beginning stages and you know what, you're like, Sam, save me with all of that. I need to get something from this food. Okay, you have spices, right? 
These will season your food to give it flavor. The same way you are giving love to the other dishes that you're trying to get off of. That's the only reason you like that stuff is because it has spices. Chips is basically potatoes. And if you've ever tried to make homemade chips with potatoes and a mandolin slicer, because I've done this, even with the air fryer, right? So the air fryer allows you to fry without any oil. So you slice the russet potato and you put it in the air fryer, right? Now, if you don't put any seasoning on that, trust and believe you are not going to like it, okay? It's going to taste very bland to you. <laughs> the reason why you like chips is because of the fat, because of the oil, because of all the spices they put on it, and they also add on there some other chemicals and things. So these food engineers, these food scientists, they literally go in a lab, figure out how much sat fault, uh, how much sat fault, <laughs> how much fat and salt can I add to this to really get give people a dopamine downpour. Dopamine is that ah. Uh, feel good hormone where you're just like, oh, this is what triggers addiction. Dopamine that I want more and more <laughs> hormone because it feels so good. It's not a dopamine drip, which is normal, healthy. When you get a hug from someone you love, that gives you a little squirt of, of dopamine. But with these hyper palatable foods, you're getting a dopamine downpour, right? This is basically like drugs. You're getting your fix. If you were to use some natural, healthy, organic, spices, like actual spices, and season your healthy food, and it could be a raw dish, right? You will find that it actually tastes very good and can swap that out. That's basically what my colleague, her name is Star Harper, and Star Harper Hicks, and she basically did this, right? So she not only made the equivalent to like raw vegan pizza and raw vegan whatevers, but she also seasoned it because all this stuff without seasoning is just gonna be, it's gonna be pretty flat. And in order to do some of these dishes, you need to invest in a dehydrator. Some people love like noodles and stuff. So you may wanna get a spiralizer and you can replace your traditional meals with raw vegan versions and go like one meal a week. Learn one complex dish a week and by the end of a year, you would have learned 52 new complex raw vegan dishes that you can add to your rotation. And all of a sudden, it's not that bad. Now you're just running on, how can I operationalize this so that I can stay consistent? The second thing that's really important to this is building a strong support system for your journey because social pressures from family, from friends, people who just don't understand, it can make it challenging, right? It's like, it can make it really hard to stay consistent. That's one of the things I'm really blessed with is one, when I went on this journey, I, I, my husband was already on this journey. He had already committed. And then I committed on my own because nobody could ever make me or force me to do anything, especially around food and stuff like this. I don't take kindly to people telling me to show up and be different than how I want to show up and be right. But I had a personal I was what we call in coaching intrinsically motivated, but the external support system was there. So I didn't really have anybody saying, don't do this or why are you doing this? Or it wasn't like that because me and my man, we on the same page. I know some people are in situations where family members are literally working against them. Like they will say things that will dissuade them, uh, demoralize them. And if you're in a situation like this, I highly encourage you to connect to community. You wanna be in community with other people eating the way you're trying to eat. So like I have a free community online called the Raw Food Health Empowerment Circle, which is on Facebook. And in there, everyone's there. Folks who are whole food plant-based, folks who are high raw vegan, folks who are vegan, folks who don't care necessarily about animal activism, they're just there for health or whatever. And there's also vegans in there who really care about animal activism, but they care about their health too. It's a, it's a very diverse group of folks, even folks trying to get to a place of whole food plant-based. Maybe they're still eating meat, dairy, eggs, but they have the intention to get away from that addiction and get into healthier eating. They're all connecting in this group. So you wanna be part of a group. 
maybe you can even attend local potlucks in your area or start one if you want. Maybe you be the leader in your community and start something. Have a buddy that likes what you like. The minute you raise your hand and say, hey, I'm into this, you'll find that other people who are also into it become attracted to you. So you can share recipes, tips, encouragement. That's the benefit of being in community. So join my group or find a local group or another online group, host a raw vegan potluck with friends or family or strangers even. Folks are doing it on Meetup and all this stuff. I remember when we had our our raw food place in Chicago, there was a Meetup that was run by this woman and she I saw her as basically like the one of the leaders of the raw food scene in Chicago just because she was the admin for this for this meetup group and they had regular activities they were doing every month so me as a business owner I definitely connected with her but also because I'm into it like I'm into the raw food thing I didn't just have a business but that was part of my lifestyle I connected with her got involved with the meetup and went to a few of the meetings I got to meet some other businesses that didn't really publicize to the outside world that they were doing raw they just seemed like vegan restaurants but they had raw events so I got to meet them you get to learn a lot about your city, the place you're in, what's going on, when you just raise your hand and you lean into what's already established or maybe you need to step up into healthy leadership, right? And if you find an accountability partner to check in with regularly and share your progress, this will help you stay more committed. This is what coaching allows you to do. Now on that note, I do have a meal prep challenge coming up. So at the top of the year, I did the 21 day New Year meal prep challenge. It was a completely raw vegan challenge. A lot of people loved it. The folks who did it, they really got excited about it. Folks have already stuck to high raw vegan living after doing that challenge. I have a new one coming up now. It's called the 21 days to immunity and cognitive health meal prep challenge. It is a raw challenge. We are, it's undergirded by brain health. So we talk a lot about the neuroscience and immunity is one of the keys to prevent and reverse cognitive decline. And we're now in fall, right? Going into fall and navigating fall. We have viruses, colds and things of that nature. So keeping our immune system strong is very important in this time. Also, if someone dealing with cancer, going through cancer, the immune system is our biggest defense against cancerous growth in the body. So if someone has cancer or is in remission or is trying to prevent, right? Focusing in on the immune system and supporting it nutritionally. We, and also lifestyle wise, which we're gonna talk about as well in the challenge is super important. If you are interested in this, you will want to enroll. There is a link to do that in the description to this video or in the show notes if you're listening to this on the podcast. We get started October 1st, but there is like a prep period, prep week, to prepare yourself for the three weeks and especially that first week as you're going in. So you wanna make sure that you get in to mentally and physically prepare your environment for that experience, all right? So tip number three, mindful eating. This is why I love raw food so much because with raw foods, you have to be present. My mom talks about the fact that when she eats raw foods, like she has to chew so much, especially with the vegetables, she has to chew so much. And yeah, like you can't just scarf it down. Actually, what we know from the science is that the longer it takes you to eat the meal, the fast, uh, the, the more likely you are to burn fat, right? You will lose weight. This is one of the items that Dr. Greger called out in his How Not to Diet book when he goes through all of the things that we know based on science helps people actually release that excess fat. That's one of the things, it's like if it takes you a long time. So it works the same with soup. Soup, because it's hot, takes you a long time to finish. You can lose a lot of weight with soup. Soup is great if you wanna do soup. It depends on what you're putting in it. I remember reading this story about this guy who was struggling with his health and he was telling his friend that, that he was eating salads all the time. And come to find out the friend actually went over, the guy went over to his friend's house and saw what he was calling a salad and it had 
cheese and chicken and all this stuff on it. That's not healthy stuff because he was dousing it in oil and all this stuff. And he's, oh, okay, now I understand why you're having the health problems because you can't be having these problems if you're eating salad all the time. But look what you're putting on the salad. This whole process of not just cleaning up your diet, but also taking the time out, carving it out to prep the stuff, get your groceries, prep the things, sit down and eat that thing and focus on the food that you're eating. Like not doing other stuff, but just eating, just being present in the present moment so that you, it, your body can actually, the, your stomach has, can tell your, your brain, yes, I've eaten and I'm satisfied and I've had enough. Like a lot of times we're eating all this hyper palatable food and we can eat thousands of calories of it because we are doing so many other things. Like we are either watching entertainment or we're working and our brain is on something else while we're filling ourselves. There's no assessment or understanding like, yo, you've overdone it, right? You've overdone it with this. So I find that this process, you naturally get into a more mindfulness practice, which then cascades out to all other areas of life to help you in all other areas where you're not being present. Because most likely how you do one thing is how you're doing all the other things, right? If you are scarfing down food always in a rush, that's impacting most likely other areas of your life. So you can get started by just prepping. Remember I mentioned like learning maybe that one raw vegan recipe that can eliminate whatever unhealthy thing you've been eating that you're trying to get off. Dedicate that one day a week to meal prep and ensure you have your raw vegan meals and snacks ready for the busy days ahead. Stash your raw snacks, right? Make sure you're, you have the things, like make sure you're prepped in terms of your stocks, basically. You have all the things you need in order to eat clean for the week. Because you know that if your kitchen doesn't have the stuff, then most likely you're not gonna eat the stuff. You're gonna eat something bad. You're gonna eat something that you can get quick. Maybe do a Uber Eats or something like this. And if you're super busy, then focus on quick, easy, simple, raw recipes that take minimal time to prepare. Like I said, in this challenge, we're gonna have all of it. I love to be on the simple side and I find that you reach the results you're looking for when you get as simple as possible because the, the body is a self-healing mechanism and we see from water fasting all of the great effects and healing aspects that the body can manifest in that environment. Now, eating raw food is a lot easier to do than just doing water fasting. Eating versus not eating, easier, okay? So why make it hard on yourself? If you're trying to, if as it goes back to the why, right? Why are you doing this, right? If it's a healing journey for you, if it's a fat loss journey and you're trying to get there quickly or something like that, you wanna prioritize simple, right? So you don't have to make things too hard. The next thing is educating your loved ones. And I won't make this go on too long because I coach on this we go through all of this, mostly the addiction piece of it, but it undergirds all the things. Once you take care of the addiction, having healthy boundaries, being able to talk to loved ones, all of these things, that all solves for itself. So we coach through all of this in my 12-week Conquer Your Cravings immersion program. But ultimately, you educating yourself on nutrition and why you're doing what you're doing, then you can educate your loved ones around you because most likely they're feeling isolated. You're probably feeling isolated because of statements they're making, things that they don't understand. They're saying crazy stuff to you that is just blows your mind, but it's because they haven't been exposed to what you've been exposed to. They're not as educated as you are on nutrition. So you just wanna share what you've learned, why you're doing it, the, what you've experienced, right? The positive changes you've experienced to just clue them in. You don't have to be judgmental. You don't even have to be forceful because once you stay on the path of I'm doing it for me so I can show up as a healthier person for myself, for my family, for my community, then it doesn't really matter what other people are doing because other people, they're on their own health and wellness journey. You're on yours. So whatever they're saying and doing is gonna have no consequence if you are strong in what you are trying to do for yourself. Share your story. 
why you're doing it, offer to bring them a raw vegan dish, bring it to a family gathering to show them this is what I eat. I love it. You might love it too. And have no kind of like, <clears throat> don't have like a, I don't know, like a hard attachment to the outcome. If you don't have a hard attachment to the outcome, then whatever happens, you can be free and you could come from a place of lightness and like levity and joy. You're just sharing a piece of yourself. This is just one aspect of you and your lifestyle. And that can open the door for some harmonious communication. And if you have a great relationship with this person, you, you have now influence, right, with them. They may want to pick up on some things. They're not going to 100% go overnight, right? Just like you probably didn't change overnight. But they may pick up one thing here or there from you and little by little, your healthy behavior rubs off on them. Finally, I will say balance your social life and, and raw vegan commitments. Sometimes we are expecting to live life the exact same as before. Everyone else they're doing the pizza parties and the barbecues and the fish fries. And now you're in a in an identity where you do not do that and you don't do it for your own health and well-being. These people over here, which is the masses, they haven't gotten to that understanding yet. They haven't reached their why, they have some other priorities, whatever. But this is a, a priority for you. You have a clear why, you're committed, right? So for you, you just plan ahead for these events. Or what I like to do, I love to fast, okay? Fasting, like I said, is healing for the body. And I find it easier to fast in social situations than when I'm home. Because in my home, I have all the healthy stuff. So my, my brain's like, well, why don't you just eat? Because it's all good stuff. But I'm like, no, but I'm trying to water fast. I'm, it's, my head is doing too much of a dance at home. But when I'm out in public, like, I don't expect these people, one, to have healthy, clean ingredients to my standards. Two, even if they have healthy, clean ingredients, do I know how they prep food? I've been in some people's homes and I've seen some things on the internet on how people prep food. They do not meet my standards of sanitization. And so I, I had an aha moment recently around this is that I had an actual food business. And anyone who's owned a restaurant, they've had to go through, and their staff has had to go through a serve safe class. So you learn about how to handle food to avoid people getting sick, right? There's a lot around bacteria and temperatures and what you put where, the cleaning surfaces, how you clean the surfaces and the surfaces you're using, all this stuff to minimize germs and bad bacteria that can make someone sick and compromise their gut and can trigger all sorts of stuff. I, restaurants, I trust them over a random person who, you know, just based off of what I see, which is why I personally do not do potlucks. I think it's a great idea for some people who are okay with it, but for me personally, I don't do it. If I don't know you like that, and I don't necessarily have that level of trust. I don't, I've never seen your kitchen. I don't know how you operate in a kitchen. Most likely, I'm not, I don't do it. So I use that as an opportunity to fast. It's so easy for me to fast in these, in, in these situations. And I love those opportunities because I know I'm giving my body an opportunity to clean up all the trash and do some amazing things. Amazing things for my brain, for my body, triggering just new healthy cells, right? Allowing the body to do its work without me getting in the way, okay? So now if you most likely don't have all the hangups that I do. So for these types of situations, just you can have your go-to raw vegan recipes on hand that you can quickly prepare and bring to these events. You can share them with people or you just bring it for you to have so you can you have something to eat. Maybe you talk with the host ahead of time so that they can prepare something for you or you can offer to contribute a dish. You want to be polite. You want to be firm to decline foods that don't serve you. So the fish, obviously the chicken, whatever it is that you are not trying to eat because it's not helping you reach your health goal, you are well within your rights to decline and you could do it in a very nice way, in a very polite way. 
But setting healthy boundaries is essential for anything that you're trying to achieve. If you allow other people to have control over you and your health, you are basically now a victim to their, to them. They have agency over you. You don't have agency over yourself because you've basically given it away. So that's the secret or the secrets to thriving as a high raw vegan in a junk food world from my perspective, from my 16 years of being on this journey. So if you have other tips, maybe some of you have been doing this for two, three, four, five decades, let me know what tips you have to share with the community in the comments below. I can't wait to hear it. And until next time, see you later.